Hello students. Good morning to all. So we are meeting after a long period of time. I had completed till energy transformations. Now today I am going to take up conservation of energy. Now you all have heard that energy cannot be created and cannot be destroyed it just changes from one form to the other you must have also gone through an equation knowingly or unknowingly e is equal to m c square where e is the energy m is the mass of the object and c is the velocity of light so you'll study this formula in depth later in your further classes but this is related to conversion of energy from one form to the other depending on its mass therefore energy can not be created and cannot be destroyed it changes from one form to the other so as i said energy cannot be created and cannot be destroyed there is no such energy present in this universe which you can create or you can destroy by any means it is only that you can convert the form of energy from one to other if i talk about heat energy so heat energy can be transferred to some other kind of energy and maybe some of the energy is lost in the environment now as we are talking about the mechanical energy in this chapter so how is energy conversion related with mechanical energy we are about to study now so we move further now you all are clear with potential energy and kinetic energy these are the forms of mechanical energy so how is conservation of energy related to mechanical energy is the total mechanical energy of a system neither increases nor decreases in any process it stays constant this is true only if conservative forces are acting in the system so if the body is in the conservative system in that case there is no increase or decrease in the total energy that is the sum of the potential and kinetic energy remains the same throughout the system no matter where is the body at that point in other words if an object falls all of its potential energy turns into kinetic energy by the time it reaches zero height so on the topmost point that is at the maximum height potential energy is zero and at the ground kinetic energy is zero okay so when the ball falls on the ground and becomes stationary or in rest position all the kinetic energy which was there in the ball has changed to potential energy 
Some of the energy is lost in the surrounding in the form of sound energy and heat energy. When the ball was coming from above and hit the ground, there is a sound produced and there is some small amount of heat produced. So all the kinetic energy which was there in the ball while falling, some of it most of it has been converted to potential energy and some of it has been converted to sound and heat energy. Okay, so we are about to study how the total energy in a system remains the same. So we move further. Here I mentioned that at the maximum point the potential energy is zero. I'm sorry, at the maximum height, potential energy is maximum, whereas kinetic energy is zero. And at the ground, potential energy is zero and kinetic energy is maximum. So at the maximum height, at the topmost point, it is only potential energy stored in the body and there is no kinetic energy. If there would have been kinetic energy, the ball would have moved further above. Okay? Now here, we are about to see the total energy of the system. And what is the system? A ball is falling from a height. Let the mass of the ball be m and it is falling under gravity from a height H, above the ground. From position A, as shown in the figure, let us now calculate the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy at various points in this diagram. Okay? So, we will calculate the total energy that is sum of kinetic energy and potential energy of the body that is the ball at A, B and C. A is at height H, B is somewhere in between not the midpoint of the total height and C is on the ground. Okay, so here at position A I said Whatever is the whatever energy stored in the ball is potential energy. It has reached to the maximum height. So there now there is no energy in the ball to move up. Kinetic energy zero. All the energy has changed to potential energy, and you know potential energy is the energy at rest. Therefore, the energy stored in the ball will be kinetic energy zero and potential energy, you know the formula as MGH. Now, M is the mass of the ball, G is acceleration due to gravity and you know height is H at A and therefore it has been taken as MGH. Now, total energy that is kinetic energy plus potential energy will be 0 plus mgh and therefore total energy becomes mgh. Now let us come to point B. Now we have assumed that the body has fallen through S distance. Okay. Now let us see. Let V1 be the velocity of body. Then u is equal to 0, initial velocity was 0. Obviously, the ball was at rest initially, so u is taken as 0. And the distance fallen, s, is taken as x here. Okay, we are assuming that the distance fallen here is x. Now, applying the equation of motion, v square is equal to u square plus 2as. v1, which is the velocity at point B, V1 square is equal to 0 plus 2A is G and S is X. So, V1 square is equal to 2GX. Okay. Now, kinetic energy is half MV square. So, half 
mass is m into v square. We have right now calculated v1 square at point B, which is calculated as 2gx. So it becomes mgx. If you do the calculation, you will get it mgx. Now let us see the potential energy. Potential energy is energy at that height. So mg and what is the height? h minus x. So it is mgh minus mgx if you open the bracket. Now what is the total energy? Total energy is mgx plus mgh minus mgx. So mgx and mgx is cancelled and total energy is mgh and if you note it is the same as energy at point A. Now let us see at point C. At position C let velocity of the body be V and initial velocity of course it was zero and S is H now. It has reached the ground. So total and total height which has been crossed here is H. So now according to equation of motion, V square is equal to U square plus 2GX, 2GS. So V square is equal to 0 plus 2 acceleration due to gravity is G and height crossed is H. So height fallen is H. So 2GH. If you calculate, you'll get this. So calculating the kinetic energy, half mv square. So half into m into v square. We have right now calculated 2gh. And potential energy has to be zero because all the energy which is there is a kinetic energy. So total energy is equal to mgh plus mg sorry to mgh plus zero which comes to mgh. So now you can see at all the three points which we have seen here, the total energy of the system is the same, that is mgh. In this system, we have assumed that no part of the energy has been lost in the surrounding, okay? But that is not possible. Complete 100% energy does not transform from one form to the other. Some part of the energy is lost in the surrounding. Okay, so we move further. Now, we have studied about the total en energy in a system, in a conserved system. Now this table which have been shown over here is showing the kinetic energy and potential energy of a body in vertical motion. So the columns which have been drawn here are showing height above the ground. That what is the height of the body? Kinetic energy at that point, potential energy at that point, and then addition of kinetic energy and total and um, potential energy, that is total energy. Now, if the motion is downward motion, that means if the body is falling freely from some height, in that case, height will be h at highest point. At middle point, it will be half h, and at the ground, it will be zero. Kinetic energy at the highest point will be zero and at half h it will be half mgh and at zero it will be mgh. Potential energy will be mgh at height a that is at height h. In the middle point potential energy will be half mgh. If you calculate by the same formula by which we were doing the previous one, you will get the same. And at point C, it will be zero. So total energy is mgh, mgh and mgh. Same way when the body is moving up, that is upward motion. In that case, height in the first case is zero, middle point half h and at the highest point h. In that case, kinetic energy at zero is mgh. In between, it is half mgh and at the highest point is zero. Then potential energy at ground is zero. Then in the middle point, it is half mgh and at the maximum 
height it is mgh so it is all the potential energy which is there at a certain height after which if the body is not moving that means there is no kinetic energy it is only potential energy which is there in the body at the maximum height okay now total energy is again mgh mgh and mgh so from here from this table we can conclude that whether it is downward motion or upward motion the total energy of a system remains conserved okay so we move further now here you can see that this is a simple pendulum and what we have to see here is the total energy of the system in case of simple pendulum so application of law of conservation of energy to simple pendulum now the figure which you can see here shows a simple pendulum suspended from a rigid support s its resting position is o when it is displayed displaced to one side and then it is released it swings from one side to the other in oscillatory motion reaching equal distances and equal heights on either sides you know this that for a particular oscillation the bob will go to equal sides on both the extremes for a particular oscillation the bob will move to equal distances to both the extremes and to the equal height okay so neglecting friction between the bob and the surrounding air that is considering the pendulum as an isolated system that is no energy is lost the motion of the pendulum can easily be explained by applying the same conservation of energy that is if you can see in the figure when the ball is at o kinetic energy is present whereas potential energy is zero because height is zero there is no rise in the height of the bob whereas when you have given a swing it rises up there is a increase in height so in the extreme position all the energy which is present there is potential energy and there is no kinetic energy if there would have been kinetic energy it would have moved further but as there is no kinetic energy left in the body all the kinetic energy has been used up to change it to potential energy all the energy has been changed to potential energy so total energy there is all potential energy and zero kinetic energy whereas in somewhere between the rest position and the extreme position the energy is partly kinetic energy and partly potential energy and you can calculate it by the same formula as we had used in the first derivation okay so this is how the simple pendulum shows the conservation of energy to conservation of mechanical energy that is potential energy and kinetic kinetic energy in a conserved system okay so we move further now this figure is showing you clearly the height in the extremes and the height in the rest position it's very clear so this figure will help you understand it better so this is all for this chapter so i'm ending this chapter right here if you have any problems please ask me in the comments below i'll help you out there till then take care thank you bye bye